Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Siobhan and welcome. I'd love it if you went ahead and hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell. That way you don't miss out on any of my wild crazy story times and just getting to know me as well as my eyeshadow tutorials. So today's story time is about a spirit. I don't know if you guys believe in spirits or ghosts. I don't really believe in ghosts, but I do believe in spirits. I believe spirits are like your soul, you know? So, um, so this is about, I don't know if this spirit had a crush on me or if they were there just to console me. And I would like to think that this spirit was there just to console me because I was really going through a hard time in my life. So on to the story. So this was during the time I was married and, uh, he was from Scotland and we, he worked offshore at the time. So, and he still to this day works in oil and gas. And, um, so we had moved down. We were living in Kenner. Kenner is like a outskirts of New Orleans. So if you know, there's Kenner and then there's Metairie and then there's New Orleans. And actually the New Orleans airport is in Kenner. They just say it's New Orleans airport. And it maybe takes about 15 minutes, 15 minutes, depending on traffic, 15, 20 minutes just to get to downtown New Orleans from Kenner. So we were living in Kenner. We had like a three bedroom, three bath apartment. And, um, it was, it was during like the end, close to the end of my marriage, which was, it was horrible. The end of, close to the end of my marriage was really horrible. He was very mentally and verbally abusive. Even during my divorce, when my lawyer met him for the first time, he gave me a four page paper front and back. And it said the definition of a narcissist. And he told me to read it. He's like, is that your husband? He's like, because I met him and his attorney. And he's like, all he did was drag you. He's like, you never said anything bad about him. All he did was drag you. So there you go. So my marriage at the end was, it was rough. It was rough. And I went through a lot of stuff while I was in New Orleans, which will be in another video. Um, that, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just going to say, I battled with so much stuff. I learned to... to Love the person I am. I learned that I was a very strong individual while I was living in New Orleans and while I was going through that marriage. Like, I learned to love the person I am. Because I'm going to tell you right now, honey, I love Siobhan. Siobhan is a baddie. Siobhan is a survivor. She's a fighter. She don't give up. She, there ain't no weak sauce here. So, um, yeah. So, going through that hard time while I was in New Orleans and stuff, being married and stuff. Anyways... We had two dogs. I had a little miniature Shih Tzu named Chloe. She's my little purse dog. I used to take her shopping with me all the time. She had a little Burberry coat. She had her own little bedroom and stuff. <laughs> I was bougie back then. I was like, I was bougie, okay? And then we had an Italian Mastiff. Uh, she was 120-something pounds. I loved her. Smartest dog I've ever had in my life. Beautiful, gorgeous. I mean, people used to stop us when we, I'd walk or run with her. Anyway, so it all started close to the end of my marriage when I say it got really, really bad. So one day, uh, he was working offshore at the time because he used to be like a head supervisor offshore on oil rigs. So he was working offshore and I was, sometimes he'd be gone for like 30 days at a time and then he'd have like maybe six or 14 days on where he'd be on shore. Well, anyway, so, um... I would notice, like, the dogs would be dead sleep, just laying in the living room, watching TV or whatnot, just lounging out in front. And all of a sudden, at the same time, they would wake up and lift their heads up, and they would look down the hallway. And like I said, we lived in a three-bedroom, three-bath. They would lift their heads up, and they would look down the hallway. And then they would jump up at the same time, and they would, wouldn't run to the very back bedroom down the hall, but they hit the second one. Like the master bedroom was on that side of the living room. And then the other two bedrooms are, were on this side. They would go straight into this second bedroom. And they would stand, they would go to this one specific corner. And they would just sit there. And their tails would be wagging. And I, I never even, like, and I didn't even know their tails were, like, okay, let me just start here. They used to do that all the time, and I never thought to just get up and go look. Like, what are they doing? I just thought maybe they heard the gardeners outside, and maybe they were by the window, so they wanted to go check or what. Like, I never even thought anything about it. And then one day, he had came home from offshore, and um, 
I was in the kitchen cooking and I used to always sit by because I had them trained to where the we had carpet in the living room. Well, no, we didn't. We had in that apartment we didn't have carpet. We had hardwood floors all the way throughout. We only had carpet in the bedrooms. But they knew when I was in the kitchen, they couldn't cross this line because I didn't want to like spill hot stuff on me or the dog. So I had them train where they would sit just right there. So anytime I was cooking, they would go and just sit and watch me cook, hoping I'd toss them a crumb. So they're sitting there and my husband at the time was on a sofa. I think he was on his laptop or something. But they're sitting there and they're watching me cook. Then all of a sudden they just, they both at the same time like turned around. And they looked, they were looking down the hallway and then they just took off running. They took off running. They ran to the second bedroom. And I'm thinking to myself, that's weird. But I did notice before, like there'd be times when he, were go he was gone, they'd be laying on the rug we had in the living room, just passed out sleep. And they would both lift their heads at the same time and look down the hallway and then jump up and run into the second bedroom. Because we had, um, like I said, the master bedroom on this side, and then we had two bedrooms this way. And we had the second bedroom was here, and the third one was at the very end of the hallway. So uh, they would always run into that second bedroom. So that day when I was cooking and he was on the sofa, and they turned at the same time, turned their heads at the same time, and took off running into that second bedroom, I, like, I was laughing it off. And I told him, I was like, they do that crap all the time. I don't know. Like, what's in, like, what is going on in the second, is there, are there gardeners out there? Like, what's going on? Because they always go into the second bedroom. And he just kind of laughed off. He's like, I don't know. So, that, that passed or whatnot. They came back out. They got their food and stuff like that. Then the very next day, it was the same thing. They were laid out on the rug, sleep. And then all of a sudden, their heads lift up. And they look down the hallway and they jump up and they run into this, the second bedroom. So I'm thinking about myself, okay, this is weird. Let me just see what they're doing in there. Because I didn't hear any lawnmowers or weed eaters or nothing like that. So I jump up and I walk into the second bedroom. And they're sitting side by side staring dead at this one specific corner in the bedroom. And we're just sitting there with their heads tilted like this. They were doing this and their little tails was wagging. They're just doing this. So I'm like, okay, that's kind of creepy. And I called their names and they didn't turn around. I called their names again and they didn't turn around. Then finally I clapped my hand and I was like, Kiara, Chloe. And they turned around. I was like, come on girls, let's go outside. I had their leashes. I was shaking their leashes. And I was like, man, that's freaking weird. And everywhere we moved, like we moved maybe two other times after that, everywhere we moved, it was always one of the bedrooms they would go into and they would stare at this corner, like the same corner over and over again. And they would sit there and wag their tails and tilt their heads like this. And I even cracked a joke to my past husband or whatever. I cracked a joke. I was like, I don't know what spirits they looking at, but apparently the spirits are nice because... They're not barking. They're not growling. Like they seem happy. And I used to crack jokes like, come on, Casper, don't go throwing no uh, plates and stuff. If you want to you can put some dishes away, you can do that. That's what you can do. <laughs> Just don't go slamming no cabinets and stuff like that. So I was cracking jokes about it. Is that my other phone? I didn't understand that. Hold on. My other phone is talking to me. Okay, hope it, I hope it's done. So anyways, um, after that, like, I had told my husband at the time about it, and he just kind of laughed off. He's like, yeah, it's a good spirit then. We live in New Orleans or whatever, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know the history of New Orleans, blah, blah, blah. As long as it's a good spirit, it's cool. So I didn't think nothing of it and stuff like that. And then my marriage got, like, really, really bad where, to the point to where he had a $3.2 million life insurance policy only was plotting my murder. That's another story. We're going to talk about that later on. So, um, or later on in another video. My marriage got really, really bad. And then, um, right during my divorce, when I moved out, I ended up moving right into the city. So I was living right in the city, and I remember I would go to work. I, I actually worked in the city. 
And so I would walk to work and there were always fortune tellers and stuff sitting on the side. And they always try to get me to go uh, have them read my fortune. And I'm like, no, 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 no. And um, one day I was walking to work and it was like, I've been going, to, I had seen the same, you know, um, tarot card reader for many, many years. And she saw me walking to work and she's like, hey, hey. And I was like, no, no, I don't need to read, no, I don't need to read. She's like, no. I don't want to give you a reading, but I need to tell you something. And I was like, I was kind of creeped out. I'm not going to lie. I was low-key creeped out. And she's like, no, no, I need to tell you something. It's very, very important. And so I was like, okay. And she's like, she told me all, this is going to be another story too, because it's like detailed. She tells me all this stuff and she asked me a question and then I gave her the answer to that. And she tells me like everything and she's like this is gonna happen and this is gonna happen she's like you're a very strong person don't don't you ever think you're weak when 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 this ha you're gonna go through this experience don't give up because it's just like you just tread in water you're gonna get past it and i didn't think nothing of it i was like okay whatever and it's crazy because like later on that stuff ended up happening and i remembered her telling me that and it's crazy that i still remember i still think about that to this day and this was years ago when she told me this so um i go to work and stuff and i come back home and this is when our, our divorce started happening that was rough. Like, I know divorce is rough, but when your lawyer tells you it's the worst divorce he's ever seen in your life, that's that's scary. That's real scary. But anyways, like, so after my divorce, like I said, I moved into the city and stuff like that. And I was living there and going to work there. And I, I spoke to the tarot card reader and blah, blah, blah. And then it didn't really start, like, things didn't really start happening until I moved to the bayou. When I was living in the bayou, it was wild. Um, there was times where I would feel like cool breezes come by. It was like nothing cold. But, you know, Louisiana itself in the summertime is like scorching hot. Like the humidity is insane. And I would have, definitely have my AC on and stuff like that. But there was times when my AC would click off and I'd walk through my apartment and I would feel like I'd walk through a cool breeze and it wasn't cold. It just felt good. And then it got to the point to where like I would lay down to go to sleep at nighttime. And I like, I never had a problem going to sleep either. I would lay down and go to sleep and it was almost like faintly. It was like, I could hear somebody humming, like humming a song. I don't know what the song was, but I was like, I would open my eyes and it would be, I wouldn't hear it anymore. So, you know, that, that happened a few times, not that, not every night, but it would happen a few times. But I slept well all the time. And then one, one night I went to sleep. It was probably like a month later I went to sleep. And like I said, I was going through a lot. Like, y'all don't even understand. I had to tell a story about, like, the, the tragedies and traumatic experiences I went through during my marriage and after my marriage. Like, it was insane. Like, it, it really made me learn to love the person I am and know I have a strong heart and a strong spirit. But anyways, back to the story. So, um, there was one night I was in the bed and I was asleep. Like I was dead asleep. And it was like, I felt someone just like brush my face and brush my hair. And I thought I was like, I really thought I was dreaming. So I was laying there and I'm asleep and I feel like just this light, Almost like when, if you have a child or a baby and you just like stroke their head to get them to relax. It was like that. And I didn't wake up because I thought, you know, I'm dreaming, you know, whatever. But it felt good. It was very um, soothing. And that happened to me like probably for a week straight. And it was during the time I was really, really stressed out and stuff like that. I went and sought out therapy and everything during the end of my marriage. And so I was really, really stressed out, but it was very soothing and stuff. And I actually dealt with a lot of insomnia for many, many years too. And that was like the only time I was able to really go to sleep, you know? So anyways, so I would always feel like this, like, I don't even know what it was like a soft brush on the side of my face to my hair and over my ear. And sometimes I'd feel someone like doing it. It was almost, I'm telling you, it's like when you have a baby if you like stroke their ear or you brush the side of their face, they go right to sleep. That's what it was like. 
Well, then that passed, and I would get up every day. I felt great, didn't think nothing of it. You know, my pets didn't ever, like, freak out and didn't start going back to the corners and stuff like that. So, the, the next, probably the next month, it was probably, like, or two, it was probably like two months later, I went to bed, and I laid down, I went to sleep, didn't, didn't think of nothing else, didn't think of nothing, or didn't think anything of it, you know, I went to sleep. I wake up and there's like a rose petal on the floor right by my bed and I stepped out and I was thinking, okay, well maybe I tracked it in, maybe it got stuck on the bottom of my shoe, you know, I don't know, maybe I tracked it in my apartment. So I picked it up and I took it, put it in the trash, went on about my day, went on about my day. A couple days later, slept, nothing, nothing happened, nothing happened. A week after that, I wake up and I have like an end table right next to my bed, I wake up there's like two rose petals set, sitting on top of my end table. There's no roses anywhere around my apartment. There's no roses around the block. I didn't see not. I used to be a runner. I used to run half marathons when I lived in New Orleans. No roses did I ever see uh, in the apartments in the block that I lived in. So I'm like, where are these rose petals coming from? And I know... <laughs> <laughs> I know that I wouldn't like perfectly place two little rose petals on this end table. So I'm, I, it freaked me out, but I was like, don't think too much into it, Siobhan, because you're going to mess, you going to mess with yourself. You're going to make yourself crazy, blah, blah. So I picked the rose petals up and I put them in the trash. Went on about my day, went on about my day. About a month later, I go to sleep. And I wake up in the morning and there's like a whole, it's like a half a rose. Like some of the petals were plucked off, like half the petals were plucked off, but it was like half of the petals were still on it. And it was like just the head of the rose. It didn't have a stem or nothing. It was like someone clipped the head of the rose, but half of the petals was missing it, but it was laying on my nightstand. I'm freaking getting chills just thinking about it. Like it gives me so many chills. I want to cry because it freaks me out, but I know the whatever it was, was trying to console me and trying to let me know that I was going to be okay. And I'm trying not to cry either because it, I get really emotional when I think about it because that was like a really rough time in my life. So anyways, let me get it together. Let me get it together. We're not crying today. We're not crying. <laughs> We're not crying today. together she won't get yourself together <sighs> now I'll have my waterproof ass scare on <laughs> so anyways hold on Ugh, I'm going to clip this probably I'm sure so anyways I wake up and I'm like man this I was like what the F you know what what is this so I get up and I take the, the rose and I put it in the trash. And like I said, my pets are not acting crazy. And so I'm like, okay, am I sleep? I was this was my next day. Am I sleepwalking? Like where how far am I walking to get a dang rose? Because I I have not seen not one rose bush anywhere in my neighborhood. So um a couple days go by, a couple days go by, and I go back to bed. Like I said, I'm still battling with the stress of this divorce and, you know, the mental abuse I went through in this relationship. And like, I'm telling you right now, I really lost myself in that marriage. Like he made me, it, and I never thought I would ever be a female or a woman who could possibly be brainwashed. I consider myself a very strong individual. I have a very strong mindset. I'm a Gemini, which that's, that's Gemini. We hard headed too. So I never thought that I would ever be a type of woman that would be brainwashed. But he did, he took little steps. Okay, I'm getting into another story time. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do that story time next time. <laughs> but anyway, so um, probably like two months later, you know, everything's going fine. I didn't get any more rose petals or nothing like that. So I thought, okay, well, maybe I'm sleepwalking. I don't know where I'm going to get these roses because I haven't seen any roses around where I live. So, um, 
probably about two, two and a half months or so go by, I go to bed. And I, it's like I hear the humming, like someone's humming a song. It's a man's voice. It's They're humming a song. I don't know what it is, but um, I'm laying in bed and I open my eyes. And I look towards my bedroom door. Oh, my God, I'm getting chills. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm getting chills. I open my eyes and I look towards my bedroom door and there's a dude. I'll, he had to been like six, six two, six three. I'm like I said, I'm short. Y'all probably know by now. I said all the time, like five four. He's tall and is I don't see his whole body, but it's like oh, I got chills down my spine. I got chills down my spine. It's like his hands are on my like the it, oh lord, it's creeping me out just even talking about it. His hands are like on the edge of my bedroom door and he's got his head like this. And he's just looking at me. Oh my God, I got chills everywhere. I got chills everywhere. And he's looking at me like this. And I, I froze. Like, that's a bad thing about me. When I'm scared, it's like I can't scream sometimes. It's like I freeze. You know, like when you see some animals where they freeze, it's like if I don't move, they don't see me. That that's how I am a lot of times. So when I opened my eyes, I saw that I froze. Like I literally was holding my breath, and I was thinking to myself, "Am I just dreaming?" Like I remember closing my eyes again, open my eyes again, closing my eyes again, open my eyes, again, and he was still like this, looking at me. And I'm like, maybe I'm just hallucinating. You're hallucinating, Siobhan. It's it's there's nothing there. You're hallucinating. And then I said, oh, my God. And when I said, oh, my God, it's like he's pulled his head back. But then he looked. I saw like, oh, my God, I got chills. I got so many chills. Then I saw like half of his face. And when he did that, I closed my eyes. I prayed. Like, I haven't prayed that hard before in my life. I was like, please, Lord, this is a Christian home, blah, blah, blah. If this is Satan, blah, 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 he's not welcome here. I didn't invite him into my home, blah, blah. And I felt, kind of felt like maybe I did because I've read tarot cards for years. And some people believe tarot cards is like a, a door to the to hell or a door to evil. But I was like, I brought this crap in my house. But I wasn't going to say that in my prayer. I was like, please, Lord, you know, I'm uh, whatever I did, you know, I'm sorry. This is this is God's home, blah, blah, blah. You're not welcome here. And I was just like praying, 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 praying. And I had my eyes closed. I remember like these huge, I call them thug tears, honey. When them tears are so big, it's like cartoon where they don't run down your cheek. They pop out your eyes. I had them thug tears rolling, honey. I was like, please, Lord, please, Lord. And when I opened my eyes, he was gone. And it was like, after that, I never saw him again. I never had any more experiences. I never had roses or rose petals left. Like I said before, my dogs, they didn't even like make any noise at times it was happening. So I don't know if maybe, I feel like it was a good spirit that was trying to comfort me during the time that I was going through, during the craziness that I was going through in my life to let me know I wasn't alone. Because there was like times where I really like, suicide was like top of my list many times during that. It was rough, rough. So I think maybe it was a spirit that was there to help me get through that. And maybe a spirit that was lost in transition. And they saw what I was going through and they had like a good heart and a good soul. And they were trying to like let me know that I wasn't alone. I'm trying, I'm about, about to cry again. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, um... Like that, even though it was scary, it really helped me through a lot. And I don't know who who or what this spirit was, but I appreciate and I thank them for being there because there was a time that was a time in my life where I was just ready to just le let it all go. Like, I lost my older sister, who was, like, my best friend, who was, like, my mother. She was more of a mother to me than my own mother. I lost three very important people in my life, back-to-back, -back, the week of Thanksgiving. 
And then I was going through this horrible divorce. And my family is not really close, so it was it was a very trying time. So I'd like to think that this was a spirit that was lost in transition that was there to get me through. I'm so sorry. I hate crying in front of people, and I'm not a big crier. And it's like, <laughs> I'm so embarrassed, but it is what it is. You know, it is what it is. But yeah, that's my story time for this week, and I have many more to come. So, like I said before, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell. And I will see y'all guys next time. Thank you for watching.